welcome to our watercolor studio uh, 42 um, today I'm going to be uh, working on a picture that's got some nice warm color to it uh, we've had some kind of cold uh, days so far this winter not so much snow but uh, a lot of dampness and that kind of that cold gets right to you but uh, this, this picture here is going to be predominantly, uh, a, I, I would consider it more of a sky type of painting or sunset type of thing. Um, and uh, in the picture, the backlighting is so bright that sometimes all the objects in the foreground are sort of silhouetted. But uh, it's hard to notice, but there's a lot of uh, houses uh, along the shore here. Uh, but uh, uh, probably, I don't know if I'll suggest uh, a few little buildings in there or not. We'll see how we go uh, with the uh, painting part. Probably the toughest thing to do would be uh, to try to do all this masses of uh, uh, branches and a few leaves still left on the tree here. Uh, coming into the painting and uh, uh, a few coming uh, into the painting from this side, a little bit from the left and a little bit from the right in the upper part. So I started to do a little bit of the uh, uh, drawing part. Now what I usually do uh, lately, I've been just starting off with a regular pencil, uh, like a 2B pencil, and I just sketch very light. And then I've been going over the, my pencil uh, using uh, 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 permanent markers. And uh, what happens a lot of times with permanent markers, you can't leave the caps off too long or they dry out fast. But uh, uh, different, uh, you know, uh, 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 size markers and so forth. They have fine fine tip markers. And I end up using uh, sometimes just a, a regular pen, a black ink pen, uh, for uh, uh, some of the real final lines. Now you could take uh, like a little piece of cardboard, like a credit card, and you can uh, kind of uh, push it, the edge of that into the paper, kind of make some uh, embossing uh, marks on your paper, and the paint will settle into that too. So there's different ways that you can uh, uh, suggest, you know, all those very fine lines, especially uh, on a tree. But usually uh, what happens is that uh, when you do a painting a lot of times, you, you, you don't want to put too, too much of uh, the uh, linear uh, uh, branches in, so you, you leave a lot, lot out. Uh, 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 you don't need to put it in because it gets a little bit too uh, kind of uh, fuzzy and busy. Creates another type of texture that probably you, you're not looking for. But uh, so anyways, now what I've done, uh, I've started off here, I've wet the paper uh, with some uh, just water on the brush. I use a, a large brush, flat brush, and I, I, I just go wet the paper. But now you don't want to wet it too much because uh, it would take too long to dry out. But uh, just enough, just enough to uh, uh, kind of reactivate the fiber of the paper. So the paint, when uh, you put the, uh, the color on, it sort of slides around a little bit easier. So I usually start off uh, with, always with a larger brush to begin with, no matter what I do. So I have wet the paper a little bit. It's starting to probably dry out somewhat. And... Uh, We'll go from there. But if you have a puddle, if you, you know, if, you, if it forms too much of a puddle, then you want to blot it maybe with a paper towel. Just sw swipe the uh, over the surface of the uh, paper to, uh, and uh, to pick up some of that uh, extra water. Okay. So now, um, in this particular picture, we've got uh, sort of a, a, an orange, real bright yellow here, but, but basically we've got sort of a more of an orange color. And uh, the, the upper part of the sky here is a, 
uh, actually a, a bluer color, a lighter blue. So I'm going to start off, uh, let's start off with a little bit of the wash across the top. Usually what I do is I work from the top down. So I'm going to take uh, a little bit of my blue and mix some of that out into here. And just a little pinch of uh, some of my red, which is uh, quinacridone rose. Uh, and quinacridone rose is uh, alizarin crimson. And you mix that in so you get sort of a, a purplish color. And that's what, what we see in, on uh, the photograph here that we're working. So I'm just going to go across the top, uh, probably just a little bit darker than what I've just done here. All right, and we're just going to put a, a little bit of a purplish wash here on, on the paper, okay? That's just across the top. And uh, when it dries, it does dry lighter. It does dry a lot lighter. So, but uh, I'm just trying to keep it lighter here across the top. Okay, and then as we come down, uh, we start getting into um, sort of some of the warmer color, the uh, sort of an orangey yellow. And uh, so some of that yellow can go into the uh, purple uh, a little bit. You sort of blend it. Now, I've wet the paper, so hopefully when I put a little bit of orange on. Of course, usually blue and orange, if you get them mixed, sometimes they make the color brown. But we're not going to get too heavy into that. Just a, just a sort of a, um, maybe a lighter color of the orange. And that's going to go kind of up into the blue. Now, what, I, what I'm getting here I'm sort of getting more of a, a yellowish color. So that means I've got to kind of go into this a little bit more with the uh, orange. Let's get a little bit more orange on the paper here. Okay, go across, just, just sort of the, almost towards the middle of the paper. And because I've wet the paper, they call it a wash, I've wet the paper and you, you won't see any brush marks. It's going to be dry. It's going to dry in there smooth. Hopefully, it will work out pretty well. Let's go a little bit, a little heavier with the orange. Right across in here. And you can always give this another coat as you go along. Um, you know, uh, when, sometimes when the, your pictures start to dry out, everything dries a little bit lighter overnight a anyways. But what I do sometimes is uh, I, I just go over it and, and just give it another glaze of uh, color. And you can do that easily. Just wet the paper and just dash a little bit more of the color into it. If you want a little bit more uh, red into it, you, I take a little pinch of red uh, and, and it, put that in. See, see what that does. Oh, you need a little bit more than that. Let's see, all right, let's try that. See how it changes that orange a little bit more? Makes the orange a little bit more, uh, 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 I guess, darker, if anything. Probably a darker shade of orange, really. So, here we go. Of course, what makes up orange anyways is red uh, with yellow and uh, whatnot. So, um, now, we're coming across here. And a lot of times, uh, I haven't been doing it. Sometimes I put my artwork on a board so I can put something underneath it that have it tilt a little bit, you know. And why you want it maybe to tilt a little bit more. You don't want the, uh, the paint to dry flat. Sometimes when the paint dries flat on your paper, it kind of creates a, uh, what they call a stain, a water stain. But uh, this seems to be okay because I didn't wet the paper that much. 
so now we're coming down into here. Now, when you get across in this area here, that's really almost uh, straight yellow, uh, a stronger yellow. I use Gamboge yellow. But uh, that's a straight yellow that goes in through here. And so uh, uh, that's a little bit, well, a little bit beyond halfway. So it's a little bit towards the uh, uh, left of your, your paper here. So that's it's gonna have a band of yellow. And so I've got my gamboge here. Uh, I'm not cleaning the brush off. Uh, sometimes, you, you know, if you're really going to drastically change colors. But I'm using just all the warm colors to begin with. You know, I've got uh, yellow, orange, and, and now I'm using uh, the Gamboge Straight. So that's got to be very bright. Let's put that, we'll put a dash of that right in here. Okay. Now, my yellow doesn't seem to come out as bright as what the paper uh, has here. See, this is almost like a fiery yellow, almost like a, a glow, a glowing type of torch. But mine, mine seems not to be that, uh, that uh, bright. I probably could lighten it up. I'm just going to clean my brush off here a little bit and use the brush like a sponge. And I could probably swipe through here, and lift some of the paint off. See how I've lightened that, that up already? by pull, pulling some of the paint off. So I could do that all right. Take some of that uh, color out and expose some of the uh, uh, yellow, more yellow in, into the, that area. I'm not worrying about spots down here because that's going to be reflected anyways. The sunlight's going to be reflected across the, the water in the foreground. So um, now, when you look at the painting, or picture, I should say, the photograph here, uh, it's almost half and half. You've, but uh, actually, if you follow it down, you've got more sky than you have land. So it's almost, it's not quite one third, but uh, a lot of times I break it up into thirds. A lot of times, uh, one third sky, one third land, and, and one third maybe water in the foreground. So. That's how that works. Now, I'm going to take my brush again, pinch it out, and I'm just going to drag it through using the uh, thin, thin edge. Pull that through here and lift some more color out of it. So I'm making that yellow a lot brighter. Than, not as bright as the photograph, but nevertheless, it's, it's a brighter shade. Now, uh, I can come through here, uh, the, uh, the ground uh, almost looks like a silhouette because the background is so bright that it makes everything dark, appear to be dark. But it, it has some, some color to it. I, I, I see a lot of br um, brown in that. And uh, I have a dark brown, it's called, uh, uh, where are we here? Uh, I have that uh, sepia, and sepia is a very dark brown, and I think I have some of that right over in here somewhere. Some of that, I can mix it in with all the rest of what, what colors I've already put out, out here. It doesn't have to be straight brown brown, you know. You can do something else with it. So that, that band is going to go through here. That's got to go right across through here. You don't have to be too fussy with that, but that's going to be right in this area here. Gets a little bit wider here, and it gets bumpier. The edges are a little bit bumpier. Okay, so you can see how that works. Now, um, even that, I could pitch my brush out and I can pull through that a little bit more and expose some of the, uh, that sunlight coming through, okay? Some of that sunset coming through all of this. So it's going to be a little bit lighter across the top. Let's use the thinner edge of the brush here. Kind of dance across here a little bit. 
and pull that in. Uh, it gets a little bit uh, wider through this. Let's, let's put a little bit more color into that. It gets dark over here. That, this can kind of pull this through, make it kind of bumpy across here. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm working uh, my picture starting from the top, coming down. And that, a lot of times that's how I paint, uh, especially outside. I always start with, with the sky and then work down. And sometimes if, uh, if I, uh, I'm uh, waiting for the paint to dry, I'll do some of the bottom or the foreground while we wait for this middle area to dry a little bit more. Let's pu pull this out. It comes up into here a little bit here, some of the trees. Pull some of this out. Here we go. Okay. Now, um, I think I'm going to put a little bit more, break this up a little bit more over here, make it a little bit more solid. But there, there's some, there is light coming through all of this. And there's uh, houses uh, along all through here, you, it, you can't see it, uh, but uh, there's buildings in there across there, uh, probably cottages and stuff. But now I'm going to take some of this color, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this down into here. Just take it from the center and just pull it down and break it up across here because this is going to be part of the uh, reflection on the, on the lake. I guess it would be a lake. Could be the ocean coming in, but uh, it's more like a lake, kind of quiet water here. Okay, kind of break that up across here a little bit. And go right to the edge, right to the tape. All right, here we go. And you can kind of dabble a little bit and break this up into here. There's a lot of texture in through here between the trees and cottages and so forth that might show up. Okay. Let's see if I can do a little bit more with this uh, contour here. Break it up. Well, you can see how, see how this is coming along. And, you know, I tell everybody, I said, you know, uh, you could almost do a painting a lot of times with one brush. Uh, you could take one, you know, like this is a, hap happened to be a, a flat one inch brush, but you could take any type of brush like this and, and, and do a picture um, using the, the wide, the width of the brush and then the narrow turning it on the side. Let's go across here a little bit more. I'm just going to pull some more of this texture into the, the water down in here. I'm kind of paying attention a little bit more to the photograph here. See what's happening. Pull some of this out. Okay, around here. All right. All right, make sure you go right to the edge of the tape there. I've got tape around the, the edges so it makes it sort of like a false uh, mat for your artwork. Okay, now, see what we got here. Um, my, my sky is not quite as dramatic as the photograph. I'm a little bit more subtle here. So I can always go back and, and introduce uh, a little he darker, a little darker, heavier uh, color in that area. But uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, see if I can work some of this. All of this is supposed to be water there, the reflection of the sky. So now I've got to go back 
what I was doing before. And if this is starting to dry out, I can reactivate it, wet it a little bit more because I put the uh, wash on a little bit earlier. So it's had time to dry out. Let's just put a little bit of that color in there. This is what's on the brush here. Okay, now, uh, again, we're going to go back. Probably we, we can go back into this with, oh, I don't know, maybe a touch of blue. Maybe a touch of blue down in, oops, I don't want that. <laughs> that's a touch, that's not blue. A little, too much black in it. Let's just blend that out. There you go. It's sort of a grayish color here, which is fine. It's all right. It's uh, actually just layering color, uh, and, but uh, it, I'm probably safer to go into my orange. Let's try some orange in there. That's better. Okay, get some of that orange in there and pick up some of that reflection of the sky down in this area. Now I'm kind of trying to let the middle uh, dry out a little bit so that when I put the wash into it, I can just make the edges, just kind of uh, soften the edges out a little bit more. Uh, but if you go into it too, too soon, uh, what happens is the colors just start mixing together too, too, too much. But I'll put a little bit more orange on the brush here. And that's gonna go way up into this part Okay, up into here. All right. Now, I can drop a little bit more of that uh, blue in there now. Oh, I don't want that. I'm getting too much of that paint gray in there, and I don't want... I'm trying to get it to more of a bluish color here. I thought I had some blue on that, but I didn't really have enough. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to pick up is some of that reflection of the sky. Now why I'm not going all the way up into here just yet is because I'm trying to let that, uh, that dry out a bit more. So I'm just kind of pushing the, uh, the reflection of the sky across in here. It's quite, quite a bit more. Uh, a brighter color here. Sometimes the, uh, the reflections uh, tend to be a little bit darker because of the density of the water. You know, it kind of makes it a little bit uh, appear to be darker than what the sky might be. Now, I, I, I hope this is dry enough. I'm I just barely touching it, like a feather touch over it. And, uh, and it's still activating some of that uh, color, but uh, I'm pulling it through to make it blur. That's what it's uh, supposed to be, water out here. So it's gonna be a little bit of a blurry edge. Okay, pulling some of that out. So what we're talking about here is kind of predominantly doing a sky type of painting and a, a reflection of a sunset across the, uh, the water. I like the way the sky is coming out. It's nice and true here. Not bad at all. And uh, it looks like this edge is going to be softer. Okay, a little bit. Let's take some of that out in here. That looks like that's gonna come out pretty good, dry pretty good. Um, now, when all of this is dry, I mean really dried out, uh, I can go back into it uh, a little more with a, a marker and do uh, a lot more with the, uh, the branches uh, coming out into the, the uh, Sky area and uh, so forth, but you know that's that's the thing with watercolor. Uh, you, you, if you don't let certain areas uh, dry out, 
um, and you try to paint something onto it, it gets frustrating because everything's going to smudge and blur. And uh, so you, you have to just kind of step back a little bit and let some of this dry out naturally, you know, by itself without... Uh, uh, I'm kind of encouraging it a little bit more because uh, I wanted to, uh, to... I want to put another glaze in there again. Uh, it's reflecting pretty pretty good. It's coming out pretty good. But uh, I may do some other uh, glazes in here because uh, I think, uh, first of all, this is going to be drying out lighter than what I wanted it to, to do. So I test the co colors. This is going to be wetter down here for a while. I might be able to come back here. I'm going to dry this well out here, get some of that color out of there. Clean that out a bit. And I'm going to put some more uh, of uh, that orange back. I'll put some of the orange back in there. And I hope this is dry enough across here. But I want to put some more of that stronger band of orange in here. And it does have some pink there, too. So i got to think about that, how I'm going to work that in. So work that in across here. Uh, even, even the purple uh, up in this area here can be a little bit darker also, w one way or the other. Now, um, I can probably get away with uh, putting some more orange into here because that's a stronger, uh, stronger reflection here. You can kind of break it up, chop it up. It's water. It's supposed to be water here, so it can be a little bit bumpier than uh, what you do with the sky. Okay. I think what this needs here is just a little bit more um, red. So I'm going to introduce some red right, right into this and repeat it down here. Need a little bit more red than that. Let's just put a little bit of that into here. So actually what you're doing is uh, just putting these uh, horizontal washers on right now and letting the paint kind of blend in a little bit to do its thing. Yeah, bring that down a little bit more. Okay, I don't want the skyline to be too blurry. Take some of this texture and wiggle it around. Yeah. That's looking pretty good. Um, a little bit more red in here. Try to get it. It's sort of a sort of a nice color, pink, pinkish red, uh, orange. Right in through here somewhat, and we can dash some of that more of that color into here. Yeah. A little bit heavy on that side. Let's see if I can soften this out. And I think we can drop a little bit more. I think I can mix some of this out here. Uh, go a little bit uh, heavy, heavier with the purple. Whoops, maybe that might be too heavy. Uh, see what we can do. Just wiggle this down and through here. It's kind of a little bit more blue than purple, so I may have to put a little bit more red into this. Mix it here. Yeah, that's better. Get some of the blue out of it. Supposed to be purple. So pull that across. I don't want to get it too, too, too dark, but it is in the photograph darker. 
Okay, there you go. Now, see what we can do down here. Take some of this color here, move it across the bottom. Smooth it off, go right to the edge, right to the tape, across there, and pull it across this way too. Whoops, got to get a little bit of green in there. All right, that's what happens, you know, you get the blue, blue gets into the yellowish color. That's a little bit strong with the purple. Uh, wiggle that out of there, pull that across here, more. get it up into there. Okay, now if we're getting a little bit on the fuzzy side, sometimes what happens is uh, we gotta say, okay, let's go easy for a while, let's let this thing dry, and then, then eventually I'll come back and I'll do a little bit more of the uh, uh, pen, penman, uh, penman work with a, a ballpoint pen, okay? That's, uh, otherwise it's gonna wash, wash it out a bit. You won't see the, uh, so much of the pen, pen. Okay, so, gotta give this a, a little bit of rest here. Let it dry. That's on the tape, that's not, not gonna be noticeable as much. Now what I should have, and I don't bring it with me, um, if I wanted this to dry a lot faster, I just put my uh, fan on it. But uh, I don't like to have the fan on, it's uh, one of those hair dryers and uh, types of things. And it's kind of noisy. You don't want to listen to that too much. At least I don't. Okay, let's take some of this out. Smooth this in here. Now, what you do uh, is uh, you get to a certain point, you say, okay, I, I now, I can't keep putting wash on top of wash, wash, wash. So at some point, I have to let it dry. Now this, this is heavy, see how heavy that is in there? So you take your brush, just with water, oops, <laughs> that's getting a little bit beyond, let's see here. Just take some water and just pull through this and soften this out. Take some of that sharp edge away from it. And uh, if you want, you could take, come back and see if we can get some of that stronger yellow back in here, right in through this area. And I'm just gonna take uh, my brush again, and I'm just gonna pull through that yellow. See if I can get that lighter not working as well as it did before. <laughs> I'm getting too much paint on the paper, so I'm not getting down to the white, white the whitest part of the paper. It's a little bit lighter, but not, not never going to be as light as it is in the photograph. So now, having said that, uh, right across through here, I'm going to see if I can pull some of that out. I don't know if I can uh, lift some of this. Pull, just kind of, kind of pull it back and forth. Break it up a bit more. Okay, so, now, um, it, it, just as soon as this gets a little bit uh, drier, this is when you can come back, and this is just a regular black pen. And if some of these lines aren't showing up as well, you could take your pen and go back in and put some of those lines back in. However, if the paper's still wet, 
you have to let it dry better, uh, better or longer, I should say. G give it a little bit more time to dry out. And uh, I don't know if I want to, well, like I said, I could kind of scratch through this maybe and put a, a couple of little buildings along the shore. Uh, you could probably do some things with that. Uh, you can take uh, maybe a smaller brush too and pull through some of this um, and just make certain things lighter in there, like little building shapes maybe, possibly. Maybe put some little windows in there. I can do that probably picking it, uh, 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 you know, some of the uh, 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 paper with a with a, one of those little picks and uh, expose some of the white of the paper underneath. And those would look like uh, uh, windows in the buildings, some of the buildings. But it's a little bit too wet right now to uh, do that. Um, this looks. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I can, I think I can do a little bit more with this, uh, making certain shapes in here. Now, uh, sometimes I take uh, if it's if the paint's wet, you can take like a little piece of uh, plastic and scratch into it, or uh, a Jacto knife, any any type of. Uh, uh, maybe a, a tool that you could use, a uh, jackknife or whatever, and scratch into this a little bit more to bring out maybe some of the texture. Now, when this gets, this is still wet up in here, so just as soon as that gets a little bit drier, uh, we can come back in. I, I think it might be, dry. we'll see if I'll try it. Yeah, you can, you can get some of the, uh, the lines back in here um, on your on your paper of the branches with a pen. Okay, we can. So a lot of this can be done. Uh, again, I, I would probably pick at this and, and get some of the, uh, the the shapes of the uh, cottages back in there. And another thing too. If you want to get some of the shapes back in there, you could probably uh, hit it with a little bit of white. Just take a thin brush, and uh, a small brush, and uh, you could take a little bit of uh, acrylic. I don't use uh, that. They have a, a watercolor white, Chinese white. They call it Chinese white. And uh, you can use a little bit of that. But you take a little bit of that white, you, know, you just need a couple of little specks here and there, and possibly you could just kind of put some little little dots. Maybe that's a little bit too much, but you can you can uh, put some of the uh, specks back in there of uh, buildings. Um, that that might be too big a dot. We can take some of that out of there. Yeah, no, yeah, that's better. So quiet it down anyway. And any time like that, you can always hide it. You can take your marker and go over it, or you can take some of your uh, darker color that you have that paints gray, and just put a little paints gray on top of that and cover it up. So it doesn't, you, you don't notice that. I just filled it in this way. Just blot it and fill it in. You get a couple of specks on there. If you catch it soon enough, you can take those specks right out of there. Make sure your brush is clean and just, just pull those little specks out. Sometimes what I do is uh, I can make it look like uh, ducks or something on the water, whatever. I'll even fill it in with some land, you know, if you, you want to. But in this case, you can just put some more color back over it. Fill it in that way. Blend it out, pull it out. 
Now, you could put glazes and glazes on your paper, you know, as many glazes as you want, uh, but usually what you have to do is just let the color dry out a little bit more because what happens is that after a while, all those colors start mixing together and you end up with sort of a grayish color. Okay. Quiet that down. But you, you could you could put some other texture into here if you want of uh, buildings. Um, is this dry enough yet? Sometimes you can take your, your pen um, and if you if this color has a little bit lighter for some unknown reason, you can go over that with uh, your pen and and fill it in uh, with a marker. I don't know if I can put any more branches into here or not. In the photographs, there's so many branches. It's all filled in. And you can keep adding more branches, as many branches as you want to, to fill it in. Now, um, I've just noticed something here that probably we don't need so much of that orange here. Quiet that down. Bring it, pull it across. So far. Go right to the edge. Make sure you got the edges filled in. Now there's always uh, little fussy things. That, that's up to you how much time you want to fuss with it. Um, Sometimes it's better to stop and do less than it is to do too much. Because if you keep uh, trying to putt around with it, uh, then, you, then you get into more problems. Uh, you can pull some of this out if you want. I've just got some water on the brush. But you can, you can lift some of the color out if you want. And you can make the edges down here a little bit stronger, too. Fix that up a little bit more. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. But uh, the problem is you do have to let it kind of set uh, a little bit more to dry. Um, this this it has to be darker here. I don't know if it's dry enough to do anything. I'm just using a regular pen. But you can go over this, and you can add more little branches uh, in the pictures. Got quite a few little branches in there that you can add to it. Yeah, okay. There you go. Now, let's see what else. If you want to put some birds in there, you can. I usually put some little birds flying around there. One, two, maybe three, uneven number, you know, that you can add. Now, you can also do something with the foreground. If you want, uh, you can uh, make this uh, part of the land here. You can build this up through here uh, so that you have sort of a stronger base. Uh, it doesn't kind of just fade away, you know, off the edge. And then, um, you know, you can do different things with it. But... Let's see, if I try to do anything right now, paper's too wet, so you have to let that dry out. Um, this is kind of a heavy edge there. Again, what I would do, just take, while, it's, while you're still at it, just take and pull some of that out. Just soften it out. Lift it out. Use your brush, like, like I said, use the brush like a sponge, you know. Pull that out. There you go. Doesn't look too bad. Sign your name down here somewhere. You can do, I sometimes put my name over here uh, on the left side. I don't sign it up in the sky, though. Really, never sign my name up in, in the sky part. Just down here. And sometimes I hide it. 
I, I, I hide my signature in with the, uh, the brush or something, uh, tall grass or something along the, the bottom edge. <clears throat> Now, how much you want to, like I said, how much you want to do with the texture, whatever. Um, a lot of times you, you have to wait. What, what I do is let, uh, let it dry out, and uh, you look at it the next day, and you, you can kind of figure out what, what it might need, you know, touching up. Uh, this definitely has to be stronger into there, but I think if I tried to go over that right now, I don't think my pen or marker, markers would work. Yeah, you know, it's too wet. So nothing, nothing really happens much. So you, you have to let that dry. And <clears throat> sometimes I, I, uh, I don't see it in the picture, but I add something in the foreground. Any tall, uh, rocks, tall grass, some, whatever it might need. Okay, and uh, of course you can, uh, w what you can do is uh, take the tape off too. And <clears throat> when you uh, take the tape off, you, it, it makes a, like a false uh, mat around your artwork. And uh, it, it, if it comes off clean enough, sometimes I just leave it, but if it doesn't work clean enough, then what you have to do is uh, actually put a real mat around, cut a mat and, and put it around the artwork. But sometimes you can get away with it if there's not too much paint that gets underneath the tape. <clears throat> so far, that's fairly clean through there. Fairly clean. And then we got the, down the side here. I'll tell you what a difference though it does make with, uh, when you have um, uh, a mat around your artwork. And you can put uh, like another color, have a double mat with a liner. They call it a little liner that goes uh, of color. And how I determine what color that, that liner is around it is, let's say if I did a painting and I didn't put enough uh, blue or paint uh, or green or whatever, then what I would do is, um, let's see where, <laughs> where we're going with the tape. I think I'll go this side. Uh, <clears throat> where I didn't use enough of the, that particular color, uh, I, I use the liner to carry that color around in the picture. Whoa. Here we go. Wow. Uh oh, I started to tear it up. That's what happened on the corner. Well. I don't know my own strength, I guess. I'm just going to tear that off there. <coughs> Excuse me. Tear that off, let the tape hold it. Okay, well this will give you an idea what the painting is. And um, I'm, I'm going to kind of strengthen it up a little bit uh, with, uh, with the darker branches. So, that's what I work from today. Here's a picture. Uh, <clears throat> but like I said, um, sometimes when it, it dries out, everything comes out a little bit better. Uh, uh, or if it doesn't come out strong enough, you can always add a little bit more uh, color to it. You can always go darker, uh, it's a little harder to lighten something up because you have to keep pulling through it. Uh, sometimes you can use a little fine sandpaper and soften it out. Uh, but uh, it's better um, to wor work lighter and then 
when you uh, have to do something darker, it's easier to go over it. But if you go too dark and try to make it lighter, then you have to keep scrubbing and scrubbing. And after a while, it may affect the, uh, it may affect your paper, you know? It, it, your paper might uh, start disintegrating. Now this happens to be better than average paper. This happens to be 100% uh, cotton and not uh, uh, wood pulp paper. But wood pulp paper, uh, if you scrub it too long, th then it starts to, uh, you know, form little, uh, uh, little uh, what do you call it? Uh, just, just disintegrates a little bit more, and you have a, a little a pile of <laughs> pulp wood, <laughs> whatever. But uh, nevertheless, so that, that gives you an idea uh, how you can work that. But uh, usually this type of painting, this type of painting is predominantly uh, uh, washes of color. And then as far as uh, the amount of uh, drawing or detail or, or subject matter that you put into it, it it's, it's pretty much like a silhouette because of the backlighting is so bright. So usually I, I have trouble really trying to ma match the, uh, the, the, the yellow to get it to glow like that. Um, if Sometimes you can have the yellow and then then, you know, uh, blot it and get down to the white of the paper a little bit more. And, and that does help. That does help. But uh, sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get there. Now, <clears throat> uh, if, if you get some, some little stains from there, uh, you can leave them in if you want, if it, it doesn't take too much away from your painting. Uh, sometimes they, they add more to it than, uh, than they take away from your picture. And uh, I don't have a little pick or a knife with me today, but uh, I can pick at this and sh show you how you can make it look like little windows in the houses along the, the edge of the uh, w waterfront. Because in the photograph, there's a whole string of cottages that you can't see. Uh, uh, unless you look real careful at it, because it's so much in the uh, the uh, shadow. Um, but even even this in here can be kind of you know you can strengthen that up a little bit more to uh, your artwork. All right. So anyhow, uh, so I'll probably be doing some uh, some other. Uh, Artwork. I'm kind of getting a little bit into spring, and I probably mentioned it last time that uh, uh, the uh, museum is having their flower show coming up in March, uh, about the third week or so in March, around the 20, 23rd of March, somewhere in there. Uh, but uh, they have they're, they're getting back to having the flower show again, uh, and. Uh, so I'll be involved a little bit with that. They like to have uh, some artists uh, working on painting on location. And <clears throat> so I usually uh, do a, a, some sort of a flower pa painting. Um, sometimes I, I walk around and see a, a little display or whatever might be there. And uh, I may uh, sit down and paint that or I might do something from a photograph I may have and uh, work from that, that uh, ties in with the uh, flower show. But uh, so, um, <clears throat> so we meet again um, next time. I'm gonna tap my brush here and not wave it around, but uh, brush it up and uh, we'll see you uh, a bit, a little bit later. Thanks for being with us.